Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. We've been gone a long time, but we are back now. It's August 21st. Yeah, it's been a month since we last streamed, right? It feels like it. <laughs> we, uh, Nick and I went on vacation week before last, and then this past week, we've had a few things going on, and uh, we weren't able to live stream until today, so here we are. We're back. And we're back. And we're back. And so I just want to mention to you guys, uh, first of all, that next Tuesday coming up is going to be our last live stream for Tuesday. We're going back to once a week, which is Friday at 1 p.m. like this. And that's going to free us up for doing more classes and all kinds of stuff. So um, uh, it's been fun. We've been doing it for pretty much the whole lockdown. and uh, But we need to get back to getting more work done during the week. And having those two live streams really puts a wrench in things for me. And uh, I have a hard time getting work done. Uh, other work. Because I do love talking to you. But, uh, but I want to get more stuff done for you as well. But the other thing I'm really excited about um, today, uh, I've been talking about over the last few weeks, Tony Cipriano. My buddy Tony Cipriano, a uh, wonderful sculptor, a uh, great artist in general, but he's, a, he's a, an amazing sculptor. Uh, we worked together at Disney from 1990 until, I don't know, until the end. <laughs> and, um, and so we've, we've known each other for 30 years. Tony's an amazing, like I said, sculptor. He's done a lot of maquettes for Disney. Uh, he did all of our maquettes. Maquettes are basically the sculptures that they do for characters uh, uh, in a movie so that the artist will have visual reference. Actually, can you hand me the Nala maquette up uh, top no. there in front of you, yes. Dustin? One sec. I'll show you what a maquette is, and I'll show you what Tony does. So this is a maquette that I have of Nala from The Lion King. Let me switch to... I'm just going to do it here. Well, I had to switch to Oh, gotcha. So here's a maquette, and... Um, uh, and they're very, very helpful for when you have a weird angle or whatever. You can tilt the character and 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 uh, here you go, and get the angle right. And so every film we would do all of our characters like that. And so uh, Tony, uh, um, among other films and things that he's worked on, he did all the maquettes for, uh, or did many of the maquettes for Mulan. Did all of the maquettes for Brother Bear. Uh, he's also sculpt. He sculpts for Marvel and does a lot of great stuff. So anyway, I'm getting really long-winded talking about Tony, but what I'm excited about is uh, we got together with him. A few years ago, he started working digitally. And uh, and so we thought it might be kind of cool to do a uh, how to sculpt in ZBrush course with Tony Cipriano. And so we got together with him about a month and a half ago, and we filmed it, and we are just finishing it up now. And uh, But you can pre-order it. Uh, and so if you go on over uh, to CreatureArtTeacher.com, okay, I don't have the link, but if you go on to, uh, <laughs> over to my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, you can, you'll see, um, you can click on it and you can uh, do the pre-order and you can get 50% off and it'll be coming out in the next week or so. So uh, we're very, very excited about that. It's going to be very cool. One of the things that uh, was so much fun, you know, I've been, Nick and I have been, working it seems like forever on this uh, short uh, snow bear and so Tony and I kind of slid back into our, our our working relationship when I was directing and he was sculpting and so um, so for the course he sculpted our main character the polar bear uh, from snow bear and we kind of worked out this director sculptor relationship so um, I gave him notes. He worked, you know, you, you'll you see the whole process of what we go through. And so that was kind of cool to put that into the course, uh, along with the technical aspects uh, of how to work ZBrush. Um, you're going to get a little taste of, you know, how we how we did it at Disney. And so that's really cool. Um, also, I want to mention that uh, my brother Travis uh, Blaze, he has a course out, new course that's been out for uh, about oh, two weeks now, or a week and a half. Give or take. Uh, how to how to animate in Calipeg. Uh, Calipeg is a really cool new piece of software uh, for iPad, so you can do 2D animation. And my brother kind of worked with the folks that put that together and uh, became pretty much an expert on it. And so we put together a course on that, how to animate in Calipeg. Of course, there's also Tim Hodge, who's got his courses out. And we're really excited because we just received, and we have to do some reviewing of it, um, but we, uh, we 
just uh, uh, Ronnie Williford has just finished up his new course on uh, an introduction to drawing, and uh, and so we are currently getting that uh, turned around. And then I'll, obviously I've been, I'm still working on my uh, <laughs> how to draw birds of prey. Yeah, if you go to the desktop, you can go to yeah, the desktop. This is the latest desktop. one uh, we did yesterday. Can you do it there? Are you get there, there? there? There's so many buttons now. <laughs> This is one we did yesterday of a red-tailed hawk, where I take you, uh, took you, uh, the audience through the process of creating this painting, how the feathers are laid in, what to think about how the animate, uh, how the uh, anatomy works, and and all of that. So we are slowly getting there. I just got word that um, there's a birds of prey center near here that has a harpy eagle uh, that I'm going to be going down and doing some live sketching and videotaping. We're going to add that to the course as well so that's really exciting get some photos get some photos, some photos. yes uh, and also uh, another thing I want to remind you guys about if you are an educator uh, if you have a class and you are looking for a great deal uh, in, in uh, response to the COVID thing we decided you know uh, we wanted to give educators a deal for uh, access to our entire site so if you teach art if you have a class if you are part of a class and you want your teacher to know please let them know um, that we are now giving away deals to educators uh, uh, discounts for access to the entire site and uh, it's been it's it's been pretty popular so I want you guys to if you're a student tell you to tell your instructor if you're an instructor come see us um, uh, and uh, uh, it's pretty cool I think it's uh, it's going to be beneficial for everyone and that's what we're trying to do through uh, through this entire lockdown uh, uh, and, and outbreak, and then now there's a resurgence. Um, you know, people are going to be stuck at home, and if you're stuck at home, then why not better yourself, get some education, that sort of thing. I know I've done a ton of art. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've done a ton of oh, art. Oh yeah, oh yeah, baby. Oh. So anyway, uh, there's that. And uh, what else do we got, Dustin? Hi. I got Dustin with me. Here he is, right next to me. Hi. Him and his hair. I'm doing. <laughs> what hair? I know. By the way, uh, can you tilt your camera down just a tad? Sure. Because you're right there is good. Because right. yeah, you were, as you were leaning in, your your chin was hitting the bottom. Like was hitting your. How's brain. this? Oh, that's perfect. Is that good? Yeah, we can see the the gray of your oldness. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right. Well. um... Uh, how much will the sculpting course be? Five thousand dollars. <laughs> five, five grand. <laughs> five big ones. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's on the it's on the website. I don't. It's not. It's not expensive. I I, I don't know what the. I can't remember what the fifty percent off was. I I've got too many. I've got too many up. Just go to the website. You'll see. Don't ask me. <laughs> go to the website. Just go. Come go. on. Get down. Get to the chopper. Get down your chopper. Go. <laughs> 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 I don't know what I'm going to draw today. Today's request day. I know. That's whenever I don't know. Uh, it's twenty-five dollars on pre-order. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> How much? Twenty-five dollars on 25. pre-order. It's a big course, so get in there. Get in there and check it out. Yeah, Eric, yeah, Erica uh, says the same. Twenty-five dollars. Yep, twenty-five for pre-order, fifty after pre-order. Yep. Thank so, you very much, Erica. I all knew. All right. All what, right. what do people want to see? What do you want today? Put me Capybara. on the spot. Capybara? Don't tell me a robot chicken or something. I don't know. Draw a man bear pig. <laughs> I'm not drawing a man bear pig. Uh, what's a capybara? Capybara is the world's capybara. largest rodent. They live in South oh, America. Oh, those. I always forget the name of those things. They're so cute. It's a capybara. Yeah. Snow leopard. Uh, sailfish. Uh, another person says uh, capybara. Oh no, it's the same person. Just said it twice. Uh, <laughs> mad bison or buffalo. Buffalo. Bison. Bison. Um, polar bear snowball fight. Uh, ninja. A ninja bear. <laughs> How about a centaur? A centaur. Can you draw a donkey? A donkey. <laughs> oh boy! Right. Yeah, same same person is requesting the capybara. He he's asked for it three times already. 
Capybara. All right, let's give him a capybara. He's been he's been persistent. Let's do a capybara. I gotta pull up reference. Flying <laughs> monkeys. I don't, even, I don't know how to. Oh, there it is. Draw dragon. Images. <laughs> shrimp. Draw shrimp. All caps. <laughs> oh, capybara. They're funny little animals. Funny little rodents. Here. Gotta pull right. up a little bit of referrals. I don't have capybaras in my head. They're not just stuck there. They're pretty simple though. That's a pretty simple looking little rodent. I like that look right there. So we'll draw a capybara. All right, Capybara is doing the this, winner. Doing this for my South American friends. I got a funny little build on them. All right. Question time, which there are none at the moment. Question time. Here we got guy. Question we go. or comments. So let's uh here. let's do this. I'm gonna. File, open, open, sesame, why am I getting a spinny wheel? Open sesame! Why is my computer acting so weird? What'd you do? I don't know, but I'm getting a spinny wheel, it's taking a long time, there we go. What'd you do? What'd you do? There we go, open sesame. There we go. So there's our capybaras. There's a capybara. <laughs> Little cutie. They like to sit in the water. Gee, what paper are you using? <laughs> <laughs> Digital. Digital paper. It's made from ones and zeros. All right, Nick. Nick, 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 I want to tear everything I think I know about animation and art and build myself up. Like, burn it down, rebuild myself better and stronger. Where would you start if you're going to do this? Like, what fundamentals, uh, human anatomy, shapes, or perspective? Because the way I am now, it's, gone, it, it's gone, not going to cut it. Uh, I, it's, you got to force yourself to, to break out of your comfort zone is what you, I think you need to do. And I mean, I, everything you just said, it, yes, that's what you need to do. So often I get these questions about what do I need to do? Do I need to do this, 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 and this? Yes, that's what you need to do. So often people don't realize they're answering their own questions. And how often should I draw? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, always. If you're asking me how often you should draw, then you probably don't like drawing enough. <laughs> because it's, it's you should just be doing it. It's not even a question. Do you think making fan comics and artwork of existing properties serve as practice for character design and posing? See that again? Do you think making fan comics and artwork, basically fan art, of existing properties serve as practice for character design and posing? Not really. I mean, maybe a little bit, but I think creating your own characters, that, that, you know, putting to, putting to use the techniques of character design that is where you learn. That's where you learn. Don't like it. Capybara, man. 
I mean, I love animals, but... <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a head like a... Uh, he's got a head shape like a... Um, a Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> You're drinking capybara today. Yes, capybara. It's a capybara. What is your technique to hide your line art when you're finishing a drawing? You just at a certain point you just start drawing over the over the art, over the lines. Painting over the lines. Kinda got a hippo feel too. A little furry little miniature furry hippos. It's a capybara doing what? That's what we, we need to do something here. World. YouTube question. Does it normally go through phases in art? Like one month you just want to draw animals and another month you just want to draw something else? Of course. That's how creativity works. Absolutely. 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 Yes. 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 Hello, I'm a capybara. I'm your local capybara. Can't stand it. Don't like it. I, I can honestly say I've never drawn a capybara. Really? Yep. Never drawn one. Oh, that's the other thing too. Today's the last chance to get my How to Draw Human Anatomy course for just one dollar. Today is the last chance. had my uh, How to Draw Anatomy, Human Anatomy course for a dollar for quite some time now. And uh, so we're putting it back up to the normal price. So if you want to get it at for a buck, head on over. Head on over. 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 I'm just scribbling right now at this point. Scribbling, scribbling. They're giving they're a monocle and a top hat. <laughs> <laughs> they're funny because they have these little feet. Or a, a hipster capybara drinking coffee. I think it would be an espresso, wouldn't it? An espresso? Espresso. What I, what I find fascinating about them is their uh, their build. First of all, they're fat little buggers. Definitely want to caricature them. So I'm not I'm not going for realism here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a f little fat horse, huh? Indeed.
If he's a hipster, he has to have a real nice scarf. I'm not making a hipster. <laughs> Justin, what accent are you doing today? <laughs> You're not doing accents. Yeah, I don't think I'm doing any accents today. I'm just going just gonna to lay low. <laughs> How about one of these? Is, is, um, uh, a uh, capybara that just saw a... thinks he sees a jaguar. Hmm. Oh? Uh oh. <laughs> kind of looks like a sheep. <laughs> Give him a saddle and a mouse riding him. He sees a jaguar. So here's the thing I've never drawn a capybara before, but I know that four legged animals are all basically built with the same parts, right? So I know um, if I can just get the proportions right, I know that he's got a shoulder blade here. It comes down to his shoulder here, which comes back to the elbow. This is the humerus up here, down to the uh, ulna and radius down here. They have all the same bones in their in their bodies. And I just need to know the differences. This is how you can uh, um, when people ask me how do you how is it that you remember to draw so many different animals? Well I I, I just have to try to remember how is that specific animal of different than other animals because I know I already know the parts I already know what parts they have did Walt Disney like capybaras did Walt like capybaras yeah actually let's just try doing a whole bunch of different ones uh, I'm yeah I'm he absolutely did. He and I used to talk about it all the time. <laughs> so let's do this. We're going to just draw capybaras today. Instead of just one capybara, we'll do many capybaras. We're going to come up with a capybara character. <laughs> How about a uh, capybara angel flying with tiny wings? The cartoony wings. They look like really chill animals. Maybe he's they're having a spa day. They're <laughs> super chill. <laughs> spa day is like, that's a good idea. <clears throat> Just now when we are at a point where you don't like what you're drawing, how do you know when you should start over or keep going? Um, I, can, I know within about a minute or two if the struggle is going to work or not? I don't know. It's it's it, you just it's into it's intuition. It's intuition. <laughs> oh, he's he's scared. Can you please tell me how do you go from from realistic portrait to cartoony character? Otherwise, how to stylize them? Well, there's simplification, uh, pushing proportions. Um, I break. I try to break things down into different shapes, simplified shapes, which helps with uh, complexity. <laughs> I then, knew it. You did know Walt. <laughs> <laughs> and then just pushing, pushing personality. Those are all things that you can do that help. There we go. 
show. That is kind of funny. Never drawn a capybara. It's kind of fun. And well, in fact, the jaguar is a capybara. The capybara's main predator. I pretty much knew that one. That's the apex predator of the Amazon. Hello, Mr. Blaze. Hello. Perhaps you could help me, or possibly anyone in the chat for that matter. <laughs> Is there a place or a person where I can submit or show my drawings uh, to, I can draw, show my drawings to for critique? I haven't, uh, I haven't anyone to bounce off of for advice, and sometimes I feel like something is off, but I can't put my finger on it. Uh, I don't know uh, off the bat who you can do that with. I would recommend just, you know, try to find like-minded artists online that you can you can do that with. Uh, that just takes a little bit of time searching, you know. Oh. Uh, I also wanted to mention, I forgot to mention earlier, that we're still um, taking submissions for uh, scholarships. So if you're um, looking for a scholarship for art education and uh, money's tight, you know, we, Nick and I have decided to start doing uh, scholarships and uh, we're going to be doing a $5,000 scholarship every month and we're still taking submissions for August and uh, and it's good for online training actual college it's good for a lot of different things you can do online training like schoolism or proco and uh, or you can apply it to college like we said um, a lot of different things. There we go. And so, um, go to creatureartteacher.com slash education, or scholarship. Right, Dustin? Do we have a, are you listening to me? I am listening. All right, don't we have a slide for that? Do we have a slide for Yeah, it? a scholarship, yeah, I put, I put it up there. Okay, good, because I was trying to find the, uh, trying to find the, uh, what the link was. Is it scholarship? Yeah, slash scholarship. It's scholarship. scholarship, thanks. I couldn't remember. You look like you were sleeping again. I was trying to... Trying you to sleeping? I'm trying to translate a comment here. Are you chewing gum? What? <laughs> that was from... Uh, that was from... Uh, sideways. Sideways, thank you. Are you chewing gum? <laughs> no, one of my favorite lines is something that cannot be said on, yeah. <laughs> online, but... Basically when he... When they hit the tree. Yeah. How do you fix a rip in a uh, watercolor painting if uh, if you're trying to remove the tape off of it and the and the tape rips the uh, rips the paper? Uh, you don't. You're stuck with it. <laughs> you're stuck with it. Unfortunately, Literally. use better tape next time. I've had that happen. It's a it's a drag. Uh, what tape do you recommend? Uh, artist tape. They sell artist tape. It's a white tape, like a white masking tape. Don't use masking tape. Use artist tape. You know what the real best tape is? Duct tape. Yeah, use duct tape on your paper. That that would work great. <laughs> Don't. We're kidding. <laughs> so it's a rodent. So they've got little little hands, just like like a rat would have. There's our first capybara. He's a cap of Vera. What about um, electric tape? No. No? No. Electric tape is no bueno. Too much glue to him? Mm hmm. Artist tape. I already, I've said it, I don't know how many times. Artist tape. Get the oh. artist tape. <laughs> artist tape or nothing at all? Yes. It's made just for that. For watercolor and whatnot. Are there any uh, special brands that you, uh, that you go for, or are they all just the same? It's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. 
So this is kind of, you know, if someone came up to me and said, hey, we need a character of a capybara. This would be my process, what I'm doing right now. So I figured we can do that. Well, the first thing I would say is, well, what's the personality of the capybara? I'm designing a character. But here we're just, I'm just going to caricature. They are really chill. Maybe that, that's his personality, except for this guy. He just saw a, a jaguar. Good afternoon, Aaron and Dustin. I was in uh, Blaze Withdrawal last week. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Hello. We're 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 back now. You're you're safe. Don't worry. <laughs> Nick says uh, the artist tape is also sometimes called drafting tape, which is true. Yes. There was scotch tape. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Person, I used I use cement glue. It works wonders. Yeah, that's just the that's just like you're peeling up snot at the end of your <laughs> at the end of it though. Capybara, there's one. Unamas. Unamas. They actually have dark eyes, but I'm going to give this guy some white eyes. Give him that cartoony feel. Like, that, like oh my god, what did I just say? Oh god. Uh, Can the scholarship be used for online ins uh, instruction, like new master courses and art materials? Yes, it can be used for online courses. Uh, we're trying not to use it for art materials because we would rather have it be pushed towards art education. If there's uh, an excess or something like that, we can talk about it for sure. Capybara. Capybara. Give us some shadows here. Bears are so chill that they can be kept as pets. They also make some really cute calls. Yes. You see them at zoos a lot because they are they're pretty easy to, to take care of. Are cub bears considered a exotic pet? Yes. They would be for here in the States. Yeah. And you probably need and don't you need like a special license or something for, for a special pets? I think so. I would think for capybara. 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 I do you know how much detail to put into characters. Um, it just depends on the design of the design uh, of whatever it is uh, you're creating the character for. It just depends on the art direction. For this, I'm I'm putting I don't know a medium amount of of uh, detail, I guess, just enough to get it across. <laughs> Dustin, what would be the voice of this character? I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. It's definitely like a like a high something thinking like maybe like a Bill Murray kind of voice. Oh yeah, like from Caddyshack. 
Yeah. But not even from Caddyshack, but just like, um, what was that? Isle of Dogs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know why, but... Oh, like, just I'm, real flat? Yeah, just real, real flat talk. YouTube question, which of Disney's nine old men did you take the most influence from, if any? Probably uh, Milk Call. Milk Call was my favorite animator. Now, I really loved Frank and Ollie as well, but Milk, I think, was just the best draftsman. And I really... And the complexity of his animation was just insanely good. Um, and it wasn't complex just to be complex. It was, it was complex, but it was entertaining. It was amazing. It was amazing. Amazing. Incredible. <laughs> I imagine this character's voice being very congested with a bit of a. Stuff. Oh, that's awesome. I like that. That's a great idea. Very congested, like math. Da. Uh, uh, a bit like. Hi, guys. <laughs> so there's one capybara. Let's do two caps of bears. Oops. Let's make our way to the river. There's one attitude. Let's move them out of the way. Put them up here. Howdy, Dustin Aaron. Hi. How about you uh, put a... I hate it when Facebook does this. You try to scroll up, but it's like, no, you're going to stay down here. <laughs> uh, put a moderately blurred out cheetah in the foreground. Like a cheetah's coming at him. I'm going to try this different... Dif uh, different um, because I've seen him like this before too. This is funny when you see him like this. He looks like a deer in headlights. Ruh -ruh. Could you draw the front teeth a little bit larger? I think it would make a make it look a bit more characteristic. No. How's it feel to want? <laughs> How's it feel to want? <laughs> <laughs> Harpy Eagle. <laughs> Maybe Fennel just says Harpy Eagle with a winky face. <laughs> Khan is my favorite character. Who's yours? Uh. Hmm. And specifically to that movie, I would say Baloo. Well, if you're talking character, like just over characters in general. Uh. Um. Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying. Thinking. Hold on. Thinking. Hold on, just a touch. Thinking. <laughs> Do one that has Seth Rogen style of personality. I, I think that this this one here is looking very Seth Rogen like. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm probably shouldn't have raised the head up, actually. How do you base your prices on digital art? Uh, time. A lot of it is time, based on time. Time and effort. Time and effort, yeah. And uh, probably demand too. Yeah, demand. What character did you animate for Brother Bear? Um, I helped, I, when I wasn't directing, I was, uh, working on Kina. I did some Tanana as well. Nice. But, yeah, I wasn't an animator on that movie, that one I co-directed. 
Did you cry with up? Yep. I did. If you did not cry in any moment of, of that movie, you have no soul. It's true. <laughs> There he is. All chill. He's all chill. So making simple shapes. I like King Louie. I listen to the <laughs> I Wanna Walk Like You song all the time. Yeah, I love that character too. And I, re I personally really like um we'll do this in live the quote unquote live action uh jungle book the recent one with um uh -huh, bill murray <laughs> it was bill murray and uh, uh wow christopher walken wow what, what? i lost i lost my train of thought there you all right but i i like that little easter egg of the of the kid picking up the cowbell yeah i know isn't that awesome I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Oh, he's rolling around. Can you show your Wacom setup? Yes, it is right here. 32 inch Wacom Cintiq Pro. Hi. Hi. And what's the uh, resolution on that? Six, 4K, 6K? It's 6K. 6K. Yeah. A little. <laughs> that one chill. looks like he needs a pipe. You didn't say who your favorite character was yet, right? Oh, my favorite character. I forgot all about it. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, that's tough. I love... You know what uh, movie a lot of people forget about is... Uh, um, Lady and the Tramp. Mm. I love the dogs in Lady and the Tramp. I love the dogs in... 101 Dalmatians. All that animation is so good. Now, is there a particular character among them? I love the Scotty. Scotty. Oh. He's I remember so the funny. character you're talking about. I just don't remember any of his lines. I haven't seen that movie in years. He, his animation is so funny. His little feet just go, 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 go. And what breed of dog was he based off of? A Scotty. Oh, it was a Scotty? Yeah. <laughs> and they gave him a Scottish accent. I remember that yeah. much. Have you thought about using other software besides Photoshop, like Sketchbook Pro, for example? No. Photoshop really works for me, and so I just stick with it. I use Procreate when I'm using my uh, my iPad, but I just keep I use what 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 works for me. Every time I see your setup, my mouth waters with jealousy. <laughs> well. Speaking of underrated movies, Atlantis and Treasure Planet are my favorite Disney movies, hands down. Yeah, those, I definitely enjoyed enjoyed those movies. The, those movies are definitely underrated. They should have gotten. They should have been bigger than they than they were when they released. Yeah.
And I'll say between those two movies, my favorite character is Mole from Atlantis. <laughs> yeah. You have this dead. The dead. Say Shere Khan because of Milk Call. Uh, nah, Shere, uh, Shere Khan was okay. I mean, I I, I love Shere Khan. Don't get me wrong. I love. There's a lot of characters. You know a character, and it's just it's super small, but I just love the animation. Do you remember Bed Knobs and Broomsticks? That movie, Dustin. Yes. Do you remember the soccer match that they have? Yes. The big animals against the little animals? Yeah, I remember. Remember the, the gorilla hanging on the goal, kicking? I love that animation. There's something about that gorilla and the way he kicks. I just love. I just barely remember from the kick. But you, I do you, remember you, were, the... you, were, you were probably about two or three years old when we used to play it all the time for you on the TV. Oh, yeah. But it's enough for me to remember, like the the anime sequences. Like there's, there's an underwater sequence. There's a yeah. sequence on the island. But when it comes to that movie, my favorite scene is when the Germans are trying to invade, and she calls upon all the um, um, inanimate objects, yeah, the suits of armor. And there's one shot where a, a German uh, it bows down a suit of armor, and the suit of armor just stands there, tries to starts limping, and he just pulls a leg, and just starts dumping all the shells yeah. <laughs> through his armor. There's some great gags in there. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, Great Mouse Detective is another good one. Yeah. Daddy, we're out here. <laughs> I got a sty on my eye. It's driving me crazy. <clears throat> Let's try this color here. This yeah, Oliver and Company is another great one. Yeah, Oliver and Company was uh, being made. When I started an animation, that was that movie was. Uh, they were working on it when I started. Yep, Alonzo is my favorite character in that movie. I thought you would like. Uh, oh, is that the Chihuahua? Yeah, the Chihuahua. Okay, that's what. Uh, yeah, Cheech Marin. Yep. Oh yeah, also Vinny. Billy Joel. Also Vinny from Atlantis, yeah. <laughs> nobody got hurt. Well, maybe somebody got hurt, but nobody we knew. <laughs> you like Treasure Planet and the like the speech that Silver gives, right? Oh yeah. John Silver was always my fav was my favorite in in Treasure Planet, like, yes, Morph was adorable, eh. and yes, the char all the characters are great, but but Silver, man, the speeches that he gives to, um, uh, to, um, what's the kid's name? Anyways, when he gives the speeches to the kid, oh, melts my heart. Yeah, that's pure Glenn Keane right there. Hey, what? When you were working on Pocahontas, were you were you guys aware of the historical inaccuracies, like the fact that Pocahontas was about ten when she met John Smith? Yes. Yes, absolutely. But it really wouldn't work as a romance if she was really ten for the story, so he changed it. Ah, uh, the. Red 
Whiskey or is Evan Rude? Oh, oh yeah, Evan Rude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. <laughs> I wonder what they used to make that sound. Um, I <laughs> saw a documentary on it one time. Oh, really? Yeah. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Ken says, I miss the secret of Nim animations. Yeah. yeah. The secret of Nim. Whoops. Oh, that animation was. was it's great. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Right. Remember the leaf of the stone. I would say that that's probably one of the most creative characters because the fact that they had him have spider webs on his back and yeah. to, to make it as his cape. It's like, you don't really think of that. No, I know. It was brilliant, brilliant animation, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robin Hood, Sword of the Stone. Yeah, there's so many great classics. We used to play Sword in the Stone for you all the time. Oh, yeah, I remember that. What is your most vivid memory of your first day of work at Disney? I remember my first day of work, sitting at the table... We were all new. I had just turned 21 years old. And I was just meeting everybody for the first time. And, and little did I know that I would be friends with these people for 31 years later. I remember meeting the two Bancroft brothers, Tom and Tony Bancroft. They sat across from me at the table. That was their first day as well. We all started at the same time. My friend Kevin Turcott, I met him. And uh, we were talking about, because we were supposed to wear shirt and ties and stuff for our orientations. And Kevin didn't have anything because they just moved in and they didn't have their luggage there with them. And just funny things like that. Not super exciting, but vivid nonetheless. Kevin Turcott is a background painter. He became a background painter. Uh, he was a fantastic uh, oil painter. And uh, he and I used to go out at lunchtime and paint. And uh, I'll put some pink around his eyes. There we go. And we did oil painting uh, in between animation and, and whatnot. Whatnot. Uh, YouTube comment. This copy looks like he needs a martini. <laughs> he does. Give him a little bit of shading here. <coughs> we need more rodent animations. I think mice and rats are just so cool character concepts. Well, uh, my directing partner, producing partner, Nick, or, uh, Chuck uh, Williams and I, and some uh, and some other folks uh, where we were working at the time, we um, we developed a an origin story for uh, Mighty Mouse. I ended up doing a poster for it. We wanted it to be CG and and uh, live action mix, sort of like the Chipmunks movies. You hear me, Dustin? I, I hear you. Yeah. Do you remember the stuff we did for that? Oh yeah, I remember the concepts. It's pretty cool because he's he works he he he's kind of this down on your luck kind of guy like Paul Giamatti when you first meet him, and he works in a mousetrap factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it like he if I can find he that. tests to see if the mouse traps work or something? Yeah, he's a he's a mousetrap tester in a in a mousetrap factory. And he's a mouse himself. <laughs> yeah. There he is. There's the poster I did for it. Nice. After he becomes Mighty Mouse. There he comes to save the day. Yeah, he's on the Chrysler building here. That was a fun project. But, like many projects that we work on, they, they you develop them and, you, and then they just, they, uh, they don't see the light of day. 
just it's hard to get a movie made. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I tell you what. Aaron, how long did it take you to animate Nala walking and talking at the same time? Was it like a couple of days? Um, yeah, I mean, my sh the animation that I would do would usually take a few days. I could usually get a shot or two done in a week. Are you still uh, painting local color here, or are you uh, nope. pa painting I'm, light? I'm painting light. I'm adding shadows. Adding some shadows. Shadows the battles. Hey, uh, Aaron, there, but hey, bud. Uh, besides the illusion of life, what are some of your go-to classic art books? Uh, man, I've got a lot of them. I mean, you can see my shelf. Can you move the camera to show my shelf? This camera right here to show yeah, the shelf. Yeah. Oh, can you see it? Yeah. I mean, I, and this is this is literally maybe five percent of my books. I just happen to put them up on my shelf here, and and they're all art books. They're either animal books or art books. So I don't really have a go-to because I have so many. Um, but yeah, you can see that I've just got, you know, I literally have thousands of, of books that I have collected over the years. Did Peter Pan have a second movie? No. Not animated anyway, no. My personal question, what what's your favorite what's your favorite version of the of Peter Pan? Like whether animated or live action, like what which do you think is your I, favorite? My favorite Pan? version is still Disney. I know uh, Disney's Peter Pan? Yeah, I mean I know you like Hook, right? With Robin yep. Williams? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I like that too, but I just I'll always be Dis the Disney version will always be my yeah. in my heart. In my heart. In, in your heart. Bless his heart. Captain Danger Dark. Mouse was also a favorite. Did you have Danger Danger Mouse Across the Water? I don't remember that. I don't think we had Danger Water. Danger, Danger water? Mouse. <laughs> Danger Water. Danger Water. Yes, water can be danger. Yes. Danger Water, huh? Let's add a little bit of light. A little bit of mm, mm. If you had the opportunity to reanimate one of your characters in their in their own feature, which would you choose? Oh, hold on. Nick says, yeah, they did a video sequel to Peter Pan. Yeah, but I don't count those. I don't count the video sequels. What were you saying, Dustin? If you had the opportunity to reanimate one of your characters with with their own into their own feature, which would you choose? One of my characters? Yes. Yao. Yao. Yeah. I think Yao would be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, his own character, as his own feature. I'm gonna hit you so hard it'll make your ancestors dizzy. <laughs> that was one of the first shots I animated in the movie. Doesn't your arm get numb by holding it up all the time like that? I find that I have to take breaks all the time because the blood's leaving my arm. No, I'm actually super strong. I'm uh, Superman. <laughs> but no, my arm doesn't get tired. My all-time favorite yell line will always be, Does this dress yes, make me look, look fat? fat. <laughs> This dress made me one fair. Psst, ow! Good slap. That monitor you're using as a reference monitor is actually really smart. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's always nice to have a second screen. Uh, we've got a third screen. 
We got yep. second screens, third screens. Don't, yeah, you, have a, don't have, you have a fourth screen, Dustin? Huh? Don't you have a fourth screen? I have at home. I have four screens. Yes, I have three across, then one above the middle for my desktop. Uh, uh, right now, I also have my my newest laptop. What? Of that. So so not only do I have my four desktop screens, but I also have my laptop screen. So not only do I have four, but I have five. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, actually, on my desk in total, I probably have at least six. <laughs> Wow. I have too many screens. I need I need to cut back. <laughs> Chill Capybara. Here's Chill Capybara. Okay, let's start caricaturing them more. I don't feel like they're caricatured enough. Hey, Uncle Travis is on here. He says, hello, brother. Hello, brother. I almost <laughs> said sister. <laughs> sister. Hello, brother. Hello, <laughs> brother. Hey, sister. So my brother's on right now, and uh, if you head on over to creatureateacher.com and you want to uh, learn how to animate in Calipeg, Travis has just finished up a brand new course with us on how to animate in Calipeg. Calipeg is a great piece of 2D animation software for the iPad. Here, let's do this. Let's overlap them. So it feels like they're hanging out in the same place. There we go. Hello, baby Dustin. Hello, little uncle. <laughs> Did you ever meet Charles Chaplin? Charles Chaplin, yeah, we go back. We go way back. <laughs> he and I were childhood friends. Way back. <laughs> Everything just felt black and white back then. I know. Well, that's before color was invented. <laughs> Oh, that's a classic. Have you all ever seen Thumbelina? I, you know, I just realized I'm, I'm drawing a capybara with the ears up. It looks like uh, I'm starting to draw, uh, what's his name, Job, uh, from Star Wars. Uh, you, saw, you saw, what's his name? Jar Jar? Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, it kind of looks like Jar Jar Binks. Oh, no. <laughs> now, have you all ever seen Thumbelina? I really enjoy that animation. I think they did a pretty good job with that one. Yes, Austin and I used to watch Thumbelina all the time growing up. It was one of our favorites back then, too. I always enjoyed the... Uh, Don Bluth animation. Yep, I really enjoyed the uh, the Beetle. Cause it, because that Beetle had like that 19... 20s, 30s kind of style to them. Very, it was like very gangster like. Uh huh. Straight shapes, just straight shapes. Six greens? What the heck? Are you a hacker or an artist? Uh, I'm not really... I'm neither. <laughs> I'm a video editor. Video editor and I used to do live streams. And also I like playing games on really, really wide, wide uh, setups. Where do you find the energy to stream with this much regularity? It's impressive. <laughs> well, I set goals. Set the goals. And how's King Arthur? Was he a nice guy? <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. Yes, King Alpha designated him as his jester. <laughs> Look for simple shapes. That's what I do. 
Are any of you f a fan of either Five O movies? I'm talking about uh, American Tale. Yes. If so, then yes, I love, I love both. Though, the second one, the one where he travels west, is my favorite. You mean Five O goes, goes west? west. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, I've always, always been a fan of uh, western films, and so all that just fit real nicely. So when I do these, I go, obviously you saw how loose I just was, and then, and then I can come in and kind of render it out and make it look pretty, and kind of correct any of the drawing that needs correcting. Ah, uh, yes, Fern Gully. Fern Gully was another great one. Yeah, you watched Fern Gully a lot. Oh, yeah. And, um, what, what was the name of the, uh, Toxic? The next. Did he used to creep me out? Yes. Especially, like, the, the final when he's, like, just skeleton. That was Tim Curry. Yeah, Tim Curry. Toxic love! <laughs> <laughs> don't like that, don't like that. I'm gonna try pulling those eyes closer together. Make them a little smaller. So, just arrived. What is he doing? <laughs> Someone wanted a capybara. They they got it through sheer persistence. They wanted me to draw a capybara, so I'm drawing lots of capybaras today. <laughs> because the person was like, capybara, capybara, capybara. Please, Capybara. Did you cry while watching Brother Bear? Because I did a lot. <laughs> well, I made it. So the stuff that you were crying at, I thought of. <laughs> or we thought of. We all thought of together. <laughs> it was funny. To this day, every time I wa watch a movie, the only scene that I own that I nearly shed tear in is the transformation scene because it's just so big and grand and the drums and the colors and everything is just it's a roller coaster it's a roller coaster of emotion man <laughs> yeah Justin, if you like westerns, what did you think of Rango? That was not bad. Definitely some great quality of um, uh, CG elements, like textures and everything, but the story itself was alright. It yeah, I thought it was kind of blah. I like Rango do. There's just, there's some performance issues in there. I thought. That's all. Have either of you watched Watership Down? The rabbit show on Netflix was pretty cool. I Have haven't watched it. My friend Boris uh, um, worked on it. He was an art director. For, yeah, because there's Boris a show Henry. series on Netflix. What's that? There's a, there's a mini series Watership Down. Yeah, that's, that's what they're that's talking, what about. talking about. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen, I haven't seen that one, nor have I seen the original. Yeah, Boris Art directed it. The the show? Yeah. Oh, sure. On Netflix. For a moment, I thought Dustin was singing Chocolate Rain when I, when I did the Toxic Love. <laughs> Chocolate Rain! That is like, I forgot about that. That is early, early days of YouTube. 
So I want to remind you guys that Sculpting in ZBrush with Tony Cipriano is now up and available for pre-order at 50% off. Which one? Tony Cipriano. There it is. Sculpting in ZBrush with Tony Cipriano is up now at CreatureArtTeacher.com. You can get it for 50% off for a limited time. The course will come out August 31st. So 10 days from now. 10 days from now. I don't know if I like this one, but I'm going to finish it. I used to watch Brother Bear every night as a kid when, when going to bed. Really? Yeah. I'm, I remember watching Brother Bear all the time, and even when it was him. Even when it was in production, yeah. watch, watching the uh, the the test footage, like the storyboarding and everything. Yeah, I made you guys watch it before I finished it. Yeah, you were asking for our input sometimes. Yeah, I'd bring home the movie while we were making it and make the kids watch it. <laughs> I'll never forget the bloopers of the uh, <laughs> We'll go into much detail, but it made me, yeah, made it was, me laugh very It was time. rated R. It's, ra it's a rated R moment. Have you seen Brother Bear 2? Do you think it represented your characters accurately? I've never seen Brother Bear 2. Believe it or not. I've never watched it. Uh, what genre do you prefer more? Sci-fi or fantasy? Sci-fi. Oh, actually, good fantasy. I've, I've been, like, binging on good sci-fi lately. saw a great Russian film called Sputnik. Sputnik? Yeah, it's a... a sci-fi horror. Mm. And the, the alien creature in it was super, super cool. Really neat design. Interesting. Good story, too. Man, in the end, it's all about the the story. So you, so either way, you like both genres is pending. Yeah. And as much as I enjoy sci-fi and tech, there there are times when when I'm the same way. Like Lord of the Rings fantasy, whole, 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 whole. Then like Battlestar Galactica for oh, sci-fi, whole, whole. <laughs> <laughs> How does one get to work on a sequel for an animated movie? Uh, you got to work for the studio that's making the sequel. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, that's a whole. It's still in Disney, right? It's just a different department of Disney. Yeah, it's a different division. Different. But not always. I mean, sometimes we make sequels. I mean, they made Frozen too the same di division yeah but that's nowadays back back then they would <laughs> they would kind of um low low budget oh, they, yeah, all they, the time they did super low budget yeah, now nowadays it's like oh we should make a really good sequel <laughs> yeah Twitch question, is there any species of animal you prefer to draw specifically if not is there any specific class like mammals or birds, mine personally are reptiles. I love drawing big cats, as many of you know. I love drawing bears. You know, big, kind of dramatic, exciting... What was that? That was my phone. Oh. Um, but I love drawing birds as well. I mean, you've seen... Uh, I've gone through and, and, you know, since I've been doing the Birds of Prey course, I've been having a blast getting back to drawing birds. Birds were really the first thing that I started drawing as a kid when it came to animals. I was fascinated with birds and actually specifically waterfowl. My father was a duck hunter and he used to carve decoys out in the garage and I used to sit out there and go through all of his duck books and memorize all the different species of, of ducks in North America 
and I would draw them. And that really became the start of my love of animal art. Were there any times when characters' uh, uh, design changed midway through production? Oh, yeah. If so, how did you guys salvage what had already been animated? We never really got that far. You don't get that far down the road and, and change it, so it doesn't... Well, one of the few examples is um, Bulan, right? Because this, the scene of uh, her sitting on the uh, in the statue in the rain was different from her, from her final character, wasn't it? Design? Sitting in the statue in the rain. When she the the montage when she when she's about to uh, put on the armor and head out. Um, I don't know that her. I can't remember actually. I don't know that her design was that different. Because I because uh, I think I've watched in, a, in in the behind the scenes that the statue scene of her. Um, uh, sitting un underneath the dragon uh, in the in the pouring rain. Oh like, yeah, that was one of the very there first. Was, that was yeah. There was a change in there. I forgot yeah. about that. Like her yeah. face was uh, was more round. It was more round. We needed to go in and make it a little more more angled. Yeah, her initial designs. I try to forgot about that. Her initial designs were really kind of roundish, but. But besides that, usually the design is already pretty much set. Yeah, it's pretty much set. We just don't we don't get that far down the road because if that were the case, you'd end up with a lot of money being spent. A lot of inconsistencies. Yeah. Copy barrel. I think that was one of the only, one of the very few times when when a change was made, like early in the animation, not even before animation. Yeah. And I do remember at one point in even in Brother Bear where one of the characters had a different outfit when they're running when they're when they're facing the bear for the first time. And you see the two brothers running to Sitka. I think one of them had like a different, different outfit or something, or I can't remember exactly what it was. Mm, that I definitely don't remember. And I should because I was, I would have made that decision to change it. I don't remember anything like that. But once again, it could have been. It was. <laughs> there's a lot I don't remember back then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know what? Oh, it was that they when Kenai gets gets lifted up, he didn't have his his spear, but when they run to Sitka, that oh, that wide shot, they both have spears then. But then oh, when Sitka a, falls oh, through through the the ground, Kenai again again doesn't have his spear. Oh, uh, we had that, uh, that's what it was. consistency issues. That's what. Yeah. It was. That's funny because that, that goes through a lot of checks and balances and for it to make go that far without being detected. I, I suppose you could say I have a very keen eye. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, just that, that stupid that, joke. That stupid one. <laughs> I got a keen eye. <laughs> huh. A lot of this de design on Friend Like Me is the old design before Glenn Keane changed it to be more inspired by young Tom Cruise. Really? No. You crochet? No. I do not crochet, Jose. I 
watched Brother Bear while I was admitted in a hospital once. I drew a scene of it in my planner, so I remember watching a good movie, then having a bad, then having a bad, bad day that day. Oh, cool. Will you turn that off? I'll silence it. How's your weight loss goal coming along? So far, so good. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Just like my brain. So these are fun. I like I like doing these little characters. These are kind of funny. Would you say your style is uh, like a chalky graphite digitally? Yeah. Like a digital. Yes. Chalky graphite. Yes. I would say that. Oh, you would say that. You would. Oh, you would. <laughs> oh, you ate one too. You don't get it. If you're looking for funding to produce a new animation movie, how much would you be looking for? For it, well, it depends on the movie and the style. I mean, I could make a movie for a million. I could make a movie. Nah, maybe not a million. I could make a movie for five million. I can do a short for under a million. Definitely under. You know, they're they're regularly making films in in Europe for you know the eight to ten million dollar range, which is pretty incredible. Did or does Disney ever outsource animation to other studios in other countries? Uh, not feature animation, no. Just shows. Yeah, just uh, you know Disney TV and things like that. They do, yes. Uh, for for these drawings, is the lighting coming from straight ahead? Yeah, straight up above. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> straight up mountain. Let's see here. Put them over here, over here. Let's shrink them all. Let's do this, I'm gonna rotate it. I know you're a good assertive communicator. Where do you think that quality comes from? Being a dad. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing, dad. No, I've always, uh, I don't know. I've, I've always liked teaching, I've always liked, uh, uh, I've always been good at communicating what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, many, many places. Let's see. I want to get rid of some of this. There we go. There we go. Some of these extra lines. There, capybaras. Little cappies. Hey, Captain. Don't like that one. I don't like that one. What do you think of one more? Uh, group three. Why, you, you have some place to go? No. Just asking. We've been at it for an hour and a half. I'll do two more. All right. Which question? Is there any species of... Uh, uh, nope, that's, uh, we already did that one. YouTube comment. The Moose film commentary was the funniest thing in the world to me as a kid. Well, we had a lot of fun doing that. It was funny because uh, Bob and I, we just did not want to do commentary for our movie. I just thought it was obnoxious and I didn't think there would be anybody out there that would have any interest in what we had to say about the film. And so we just thought it would be a lot funnier to get 
Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas to come in and do commentary, but do it as the moose. And so we went up to New York, got them into the studio, and uh, and we just played the movie back to back, I think three times, and we just let them riff. And we went through six hours worth of material after that, and we, st we just pulled together the best parts. And uh, Tim Mertens, who is our editor, he's the pizza guy who delivers the pizza. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was fun. I, I thought that was a lot more fun than, than us doing commentary, for sure. But since then, my co-director, Bob Walker, has passed away. Uh, man, I miss him. He was a great guy. And, uh, but Chuck is still around, and, and we, we thought that it'd be fun to kind of play the movie and, um, and talk about it as we watch it and just kind of bring up some of the old memories and put it out as a YouTube video. We just thought it could be kind of, kind of cool. was Nick's idea. I think it's a good idea, Nick. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Should, should I submit my application for your scholarship monthly? No. Once you're once it's in, it's in. So you don't have to do it every month. If you don't get the scholarship one month or whatever month you 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 uh, put in, don't worry. We have it. And not unless you update it, there's no reason to uh, submit again. And because we're doing this every month, don't rush. You know, don't rush. It doesn't have to be rushed. If you don't get it in this month, then we'll get it in next month. To Not really. Okay. <laughs> Is there a way to legally protect your idea for a movie, show, or game, whatever, uh, when you pitch it to others? I mean, you know, it's it's pretty well known around Hollywood. It, it, it's, I mean, every, it is copywritten. It, when you have a script, it's copywritten. You can register it. You can do whatever. But um, there is really no danger of anyone stealing your story pitching. There's always someone that comes out wanting to sue Disney because they say that, you know, I had somebody, I remember after Brother Bear, someone came back and said that was their idea. We wrote the movie ourselves. Our, we, no one was ever, you know, so you just, you just never know. Give them little can, ears. Kind of made like a story long paragraph. <laughs> but the the basic question is you have really great great long hair, why'd you cut it? <laughs> you made a long paragraph and I just simplified it with, with those few words. I cut it because I got tired of it. Oh and also he's a huge fan of your Disney work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I cut my hair. I just got tired of it. I had long hair for 25 years, and I was just ready to have short hair. I'm tired of pulling clogged hair out of my drain. Yeah, that, that gets annoying real quick. And here in Florida, you know, it's 100 degree in the, with the humidity and everything. 100 degrees, and 
Is there any real difference between a director and a co-director? No, I mean, it, well, it depends on how they bill it, but, like, Bob and I were equal directors. But we were just co-directors. We, we did it together. It's a huge job, directing an animated movie, and so sometimes it takes two people. Favorite picks of online art schools to spend your to spend your scholarship on. To spend my scholarship? What? Y your scholarship? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like what? Oh, what I don't. Online know. art schools? Do you think are are worth uh, I, going? Into? I think Proco is great. I think Schoolism is great. I think Master Master Academy is great. Um, but I don't want to influence. You know, it's it's up to whatever you guys want to do. I just want to be there to help you do it. Depends on what you want. What you really, really want. So tell, we, tell you what you want. <laughs> what you really, really, really want. want. Listen, if you want to be my lover, <laughs> you got to get with my friends. <laughs> Do these animals dig tunnels? No. I don't think so. Oh, they do swim. They do a lot of swimming. They're aquatic. Next week request, a zebra striped orca. Zebra striped orca, that's interesting. How's a bird to prey course going? Do you know which month it will come out? <laughs> it will come out in the month of August. 2030. YouTube question. What did you think of Zootopia? I loved Zootopia. It was directed by one of my favorite story people, animator. Actually, I think he's one of the best animators out there, too. Byron Howard. I think a lot of people forget he was an animator. And he's so good. I haven't Googled them. Looks like a beaver. Well, gee, eh? You're <laughs> one big beaver. <laughs> If someone had an animated scene that had, been, had to be scrapped, how would you break the news? We gotta scrap it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just part of that's part of making a movie. So it just that just happens. And they go, okay, uh, next. That'd be about it. have you been letting your mustache grow? Mine's been growing for about two months now and it's pathetic. <laughs> I've been growing it for 52 years. 52? <laughs> 55. 55. I can count all the way <laughs> to 55. Why does this cap 
come here and hate us so much? <laughs> it's so much easier to draw in this attitude. When you see them in person, they're just so kind of nonchalant and chill. 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 All right, everyone, chill. Scrapping doesn't happen often, though, right? Like, usually they plan it out with storyboards. Oh, of course. I've never worked personally on an animated film. No, of course it doesn't happen often. If it did, the director would get fired. <laughs> you don't want to scrap animation and done. That's just throwing money away. And by that I mean like full scene scrapping, colored and all. Yeah. I've never really seen much of like fully animated and colored scenes getting scrapped. Usually it's just storyboard segments that are storyboarded or that are deleted. Exactly. It does happen. It does happen. Extremely, often. extremely rare. Yeah. Like more common, I see in deleted scenes besides um, storyboarding is like the rough animation to it. Yeah, but you don't want that scrapped either. No. Basically, you don't want any of it scrapped. Like the most common is. Uh, that scrap is stored, that's uh, deleted it, in the deleted scenes is storyboard. Storyboard, yeah, because I mean, then, a lot of times the storyboard is just an experiment to see if it's going to work. Yeah. And then the rare, rare would be um, rough animate, like some rough animation, not the entire scene rough. Uh, right. Animated, just certain areas animated. But then the rarest would be f like completely Full done. color. Yeah. yeah. That hardly ever happens. In fact, I, I don't even remember any movies that have that where an entire, where an entire complete scene is, is deleted. We had some on Aladdin. When we did Aladdin, we it all went back in. Oh, um, really? It was mainly storyboard. There was some animation. But the entire movie went back in for rewrite early on in the process. Oh, wow. When we were making it. Yep, Jeffrey Katzenberg said, stop, it's not good enough. It's one of the things I loved about working for Disney is that they, if the movie wasn't right, they wouldn't put it out. And we took, we spent a lot of time making those movies right. I mean, it's a, they, it's Disney, they, they know what's good and what's was bad, or at least they... Well, it's story, you know, and you, 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 the great thing about making an animated movie is you can watch the movie before it's done. Yeah. You watch it in storyboard, right? And, yep. and, and, and animation, some animation. But, um, and so you, it's like a dress rehearsal. You get to watch the movie before it's made as you're making it, and which they, you're not able to do that in live action. And so it's a, it's a really great way of checking your quality control of checking your quality, having quality control. <coughs> scenes got scrapped in Emperor's New Groove. Ever see the, that documentary? Lots of, lots of scenes got scrapped in Emperor's New Groove. That movie was, that movie went through hell getting made. Didn't Tangled too? Tangled... Uh, not as much as Emperor's New Groove? Not as much as Emperor's New Groove. Yeah, when that came out, that that was another great that's another great movie that, that unfortunately got a little 
I think it got pretty underrated. What do you think? Yeah. And of course, my favorite character in that movie's got to be Kronk. <laughs> Tony Bancroft. That was his character. Kronk. How do you do camera movements in animation and how did they do it in the 90s? Well, when you are shooting physical artwork, you just move the camera one tiny little increment at a time and take a picture. That's how you do a camera move. It's really, it's like regular animation. Um, uh, in when things went digital, you know, you have all, it's all basically the same thing. You, you can do the animation, and then once the animation's done, then you move the camera, it's all virtual, but you move the camera through whatever it is you are needing it to do. And so, it's, it's all the same thinking, it's just you don't have physical, you don't have the physical artwork. It's scanned, man. You ever draw a horse walking down a walking down a staircase? Well, I draw a horse walking down a spiral staircase. Walking, yeah. I used to joke about that. It was that Tom Cito was talking about the old guys trying to come up with the hardest thing you could animate to be a horse walking downstairs a, down a spiral staircase. All right, so. Let me tell you something, Pilgrim. So once again, I want to remind you guys that Tony Cipriano his course on, if you've ever wanted to learn how to sculpt in ZBrush, we've got just the course for you. Tony Cipriano, very good friend of mine. Um, we were friends for years. We've known each other since 1990. Um, Tony's a sculptor and uh, as recently in the last few years switched over to working digitally. Um, did some great, did all the maquettes from Mulan, did the maquettes for Brother Bear, um, does a lot of Marvel stuff. <clears throat> um, he put together a course on ZBrush. If you ever want to learn how to paint, how to sculpt digitally, then you're going to want you're going to want to check out his course. And so, if you go to CreatureArtTeacher.com, you can get that course for fifty percent off. It goes full price October thirty first. So shuck it out, man. Shuck it out, man. <laughs> Tangled is the best. My daughter forces me to play as Eugene every evening. The part when he's getting hit with the cooking pan. <laughs> <laughs> Ping! You broke my smolder. You broke my smolder. My favorite scene in that movie has to be the I I have a dream, which yeah. is all the evil th like evil looking thugs yeah. and henchmen. They, don't, they all turn out to be like the nicest guys. <laughs> oh, did I say October? Sorry, I don't mean October. August thirty first. The course comes out. I don't know why I had August. I could see August in my head. I don't know why I said October. I think it's because I'm drawing. But uh, the um, the. Sculpting and ZBrush course comes out August 31st, the end of this month. I was just, my brain was on autopilot, sorry. I can't help but see the capybara's nose as his eyes. Well, stop it. Stop it. You stop it now. Ah. There we go. 
There we go. You want any capybaras? We got you capybaras. Hey, look, he's behind the other capybaras. No. There. Now, let's see here. Let's do a uh, thing there. And a uh, thing here. And we're going to create a clipping mask. Set that to multiply. <laughs> Frying pan, two do right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> How do you prepare to animate a scene like the Animal Tower and just can't wait to be king? Was it all drawn by one artist? It was all drawn by one, by one artist. <laughs> what? Yes. Oh my god. Yep, and you just, you do one piece at a time. Just work it all out. How long did it take that guy to animate that animal tower? Oh, about four hours. <laughs> Bull. <laughs> I'm calling it A long bold. time. I don't know how about long it took. A couple months? I don't remember. A year? I don't remember who animated it. I know we did it at our studio. Because we, we did uh, the whole I Can't Wait to Be King song at the Florida studio. I animated uh, the ostriches too. I designed and animated them. Uh, when, the, when, the, uh, when they're riding on the ostriches' backs. Oh, yeah. Running, running along. Yeah, I did the ostriches and that. Huh. And the cats. Nala was my character. Hello. Hello. First, first time catching one of your live streams. I'm always wowed by how relaxed yet sturdy your gestures are. <laughs> I have a lot of trouble drawing full bodies without them being stiff. Yeah, that, you know, I, I try to find, one, one way to do that is to try to think about the fluidity that you want to get across. I try to keep that fluidity in mind when I'm drawing. And, uh... And so, and then build on top of that. Every time you, you know, everything you do should be an improvement upon the step that came before, right? And so, I want to. You want to make sure it doesn't go backwards, obviously. So when I when I'm drawing, I want the my big goal is to hold on to that jet, make sure that I don't lose it. Keep that fluidity. And over time, you become more and more adept at, at being able to do that. I did a lecture um, with an animation uh, forum uh, in Moscow on Tuesday. I just thought of this. I was just going to pull this up. And I, I gave a lecture on how to animate four-legged walks, specifically bear. Oh, we lost it. Shoot, let me see if I can find it here. I don't know if I, yeah. I, don't know if I even saved it. Uh, no. Shoot, it didn't even get saved. Um, oh, I know. I do. I do want to show you this one here. If you guys haven't seen it yet, this is um, animation that I did for the Birds of Prey course, where I talk about birds of prey flight and bird flight. And uh, so this is going to be part of the course, and um, I'm going to go through it pretty much frame by frame, talking about. Let me turn off my light box. Just talking about these mechanics of how the bird really scoops that air and then opens the feathers up, the, the anatomy of the wing itself. You know, what, look at the feet, look at the legs, the way they push off and then drop with every pump of the wings. You know, it takes the whole body to kind of get things going. 
And um, it's a lot of fun to animate that. And I'm always hyper sensitive to badly animated birds in, in like the backgrounds of uh, shots and stuff. I can really tell when someone hasn't done their homework. And it doesn't take much homework to do to, to animate a bird properly. But so many people just go into it and go, oh, well, it's just a bird, you know, flapping a wing up and flapping a wing down when it's way more than that. And you can tell. And if you've ever watched a live action film that has like vultures in the background that have been C added through CG, nine times out of ten they look horrible because, well, you can tell that they're CG because they weren't animated right. And so I'm going to go over the mechanics of bird flight as well. We're we talking about the um, the animal tower from Lion King. Yeah, when he said uh, the person the person that animated it took him four hours, <laughs> jokingly. So he wrote, "When he said four hours, I turned away from my commission in disbelief." <laughs> and also, uh, no, it took weeks. It took that that guy weeks. I I want to say it was Rob Corley that animated it, but I'm not sure. And. Uh, Someone else wrote, fastest paycheck goes to... <laughs> just can't wait to be King Animal Pile Animator. <laughs> and Martin's asking, how was your vacation? It was good. It was very nice. It was very nice. Very nice. It was hot, I'll tell you that. Hot? It was very hot. It was super hot. Capybaras. Capybara. 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 Capy capy. Capybara. Cap Pop a cap in your bara. There he is. Another capybara. Cap of Chino, Cap of Barra, two caps of Barra. Let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Put it in a folder. Turn these guys on. Can you give us an overview of all the big projects you're working on right now? Uh, well, we've got a lot of courses that we're working on. Um, let me do something real quick. Yeah, let's move him over there like that. There we go. How do you want to, how do you want to fit the last one? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm just. That's. This is gonna be it. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh. I guess I could do one right here. Like a little capybara family. Yeah, our little capybara family. Capybara. Little cap cappy. Actually, the the two. The two, uh, the one on the left and one on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, try flipping those around. Oh, because, that's a good idea. Yeah, because that's a great you idea. You got the two that are like very smug yeah. looking. Then you have the, then you have the one on the left, left there right now that's like got like the surprise look, but that fits with the very relaxed look. Look, it's like one of those means of like Put him over here. Well, plus you can see the pose better. Yeah. And then take this guy and go right here. Put him back here. <laughs> I like that. That that fits better. Maybe on the left, slightly, slightly lower. Uh, he's gonna break the he's gonna break the uh, the perspective if I go any lower. There we go. 
looked like you just shifted him to, to the right. Uh, never mind. Do what? Never mind. Move I'm saying that he, it looked like you uh, you just shifted over to the right, but just sh shifted him because his front foot doesn't feel the same level as everyone else. <laughs> Looks well, like it's kind of floating. Well, it's meant there's a little bit of a plane going back. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, like the one on the right is the same way. Gotcha, gotcha. I'll, I'll shut up there. Shut up there. Shut up there. Let me do my job. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Capybaras. I don't... They look weird when you try to draw them from the front. It's hard to draw them from the front. They it's look... They're very iconic from... Uh, I feel like when you when you draw one capybara, you feel, you get the feeling like you need to draw more. Yeah. <laughs> I like this one with the open mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those teeth. Are you able to show that? Capybara. Uh, cute little guys. Capybara. Yeah, they. Yeah, somebody says a. Uh, somebody just says T Rex head. Yeah, they kind of have that. That T Rex head because T Rex was, I suppose, has a square-ish head. At least yeah. the Jurassic Park version does. Exactly. Some good ones in here. Let me shrink that up a little bit. <laughs> One more or no? What time is it? It's three. It's three o'clock. So yeah. I was thinking one right here, like a fifth one right there. Can Maybe work. What do you think? The like one more in the middle. Yeah, right there, right there, right here. In the behi and behind. Would be that. It's, it's all up to you. Going for it. So he's like, draw a baby cat bay! A baby! <laughs> Oops. Wrong color. Yeah, folks are asking for one more. One more cat bay! Too loud? This fan? No. <laughs> the next one needs teeth. Like the one that you showed earlier that. <laughs> I meant to. I, this is meant to be like his hand pushing, but it looks like he's doing something back there. <laughs> yeah, that'd let me, be. Let me do this. Let me put him on top. Holy cow, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> completely, completely. Just drop it. Just drop it. <laughs> turn it off! Turn it off! Turn it off!
They're just their head shapes are just so blah. That's what's weird about them. You should be drawing that one behind the surprise one. There. See, I'm trying to, I, I try to get a, a really smooth gesture first. him a bit of an overbite. Or do I want to give him a little bit more of a wide-eyed? Change his expression a little bit. Yeah, this is getting boring. People are leaving. <laughs> I just think people are just running out of questions to ask. What's your favorite color? <laughs> Did you like the last Terminator movie? I loved it, actually. I I never watched the very last one, the latest one, Dark Fate. Yeah, I, I thought I like that they they went back to the original timeline. You liked or didn't like? I did. Oh, you did. Although, the one thing I didn't like was how kind of over-the-top, melodramatic Linda Hamilton was. Which one's Linda Hamilton again? Which one's Linda again? Sarah Connor. Oh. Yeah, it's the original Sarah Connor. He says she was melodramatic. Yeah, it's just over the top. Can I get those cappies for print? <laughs> cappies. Cappies. Hey, Cappy. Get lots of emails. What did you have for catering at Disney? Oh, we didn't have catering. We had a commissary. When we... Uh, we would just have food delivered when we were doing overtime. Well, somebody had, you know, had to play rock paper again, rock paper scissors to find out who ordered the pizza. Uh, no, we had people that would t come and take our order, and then they would they would go and order it for us while we worked. The moment you said take our order, I instantly thought of Mulan. <laughs> order, people, order. <laughs> I'll take a fried shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet and pungent shrimp. <laughs> That's what it was. That's not funny. <laughs> Any new traditional art courses planned? Um, yes. Ronnie Williford has got his introduction to drawing, which I think he does everything traditional on that. Um, and then I'm going to be 
I want to do uh, an acrylics course. I want to do another oil painting course. Rather off topic, but off cam guy talking about me said he looked he like that he likes games. Uh, heard of Among Us? Pretty cool, fun game right right now on Steam. Um, I just looked it up and I I looked I've seen it on the Steam store, but I never really looked into it a whole lot. Uh, I'm more into like flight sims and first person shooters, things like that. But the one game I'm really interested in. in getting eventually is uh, Fall Guy. At least I think it's called Fall Guy. It's the, uh, yeah, Fall Guys. Ultimate Knockouts. The one I showed you yesterday, Dad. Yeah. With uh, all the, the wipeout looking gameplay. Yeah. That game looks like so much fun. It does. For the person that asked about the traditional what, what other traditional courses do we have coming out? I forgot to mention that. Tony Cipriano who's doing the uh, the ZBrush course for us. He's also doing a traditional sculpting course for us. Oh yeah! And it's going to be—he'll be doing the uh, uh, human figure, which is going to be really cool. Ooh. What are you guys having for dinner tonight? Probably salmon. I have salmon almost every night. I think I ate my my day's meal. Earlier today, right before the live uh, fried stream. chicken, the fr fried chicken and cheese curds. <laughs> yeah, you probably it's went overboard on your on your calories. Oh yeah, I I need to I need to fix my cal calorie intake, but it's just so good. <laughs> Why is it that all the all the tasty stuff are the, are the stuff that's bad for you. Well, <laughs> because that's the stuff that packs on the calories. There was a time that when a lot of food wasn't available, your body would crave the stuff that would pack on the most calories. That's why it's the most tasty, desirable stuff. But now Hello. that we have lots of food available, Hello. I'm a little shy because I'm such a big fan of yours. I'm 18 and starting my first semester in college as an ed animation major. Any advice for a beginner animator? I absolutely love your work. Thank you. Um, yeah, just, I mean, for me, just stick to it. Just keep going. Keep Do it because you love it. Listen to people when they give you advice. Try different things. Don't stick to anime. Try lots of different things. Try different styles. Um, and you know, and, and study study other animators, study other artists, to see what and how they do what they do. Broaden your mind. Observe the world around you. Uncle Travis commented, I just sent you an image of my capybaras, big brother. I was drawing along with you. I love capybaras so much. He sent me an image? Yep. Of the capybaras that he... What, did he email it? I think so. Well, that's awesome. I'm actually trying to write a story, but even if I've been drawing for six to eight years, I feel like I don't have enough experience because I don't have my own art style yet. Any tips? Just don't be impatient. Not having your your art style will emerge. Don't worry about not having an art style. It will emerge. Was there more to the question? I feel like I'm missing something. No, that's it. 
I'm actually yeah. trying to write a story, but even if I have been drawing for six, six or eight years, I feel like I don't have enough experience because I don't have any, I don't have my own uh, art style yet. Yeah, you just got to keep plowing. Art, the uh, style is something that emerges, it, it develops organically. You just got to keep, keep pushing through. Like There's Travis's images. What? There's Travis's capybaras. He was oh. drawing along with me. Nice. Yeah. Cute. Right there. Right there. Right there. Bingo, bingo, bongo. You know, definitely uh, uh, check it out, Caitlin. <coughs> Take a peek at it when, whenever I can. Hey, Aaron, do you know the uh, what paperweight, the animation paper you guys used at Disney? 20 pounds, I, 22 pounds? I don't know. No, I don't. I can't remember what it was. Oops. Let's do this. Yes, you should try a game called Super Liminal. It's on the Switch, not yet on the PC. Oh, Let's not talk about video I'll games. Let's take a peek at that. I know right? the art style won't affect the story itself, but I'm a perfectionist. I would like to learn to animate better because I feel it'll add more significance to my story. What's that? I, you're talking to yourself. Are you talking to me or are you ta who are you talking to? No, I'm, that was a comment I read out. Gotcha. 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 Yeah, I think we're starting to lose the audience here. I think they're going a little, little cuckoo. Yeah. Even I'm going a little cuckoo. Well then, pull it together, Dustin. <laughs> Will the Z brushes work with Krita? Um, Z brush work with Krita. Z brush is a sculpting program. Well, the brushes in the Z brush, because doesn't uh, doesn't Z brush use uh, different forms of brushes to sculpt? Is Krita? Is, I don't know if Krita. Is a sculpting program. Is it a sculpting program? I don't know. I but the qu the answer is I don't know. That one I don't know. That's a that's a uh, that's a good question for Tony. Or Nick might know. Krita is a free and open source raster graphics editor designed primarily for digital and two D animation. Yeah. No. What? It's not yeah. the same. It's yeah. Yeah, ZBrush is ZBrush so is a sculpting program. Yeah. For CG models. Can you show the setup again? Here you go. Beautiful 32 inch Wacom Cintiq Pro on Mac. Cheese grater. Boom. There we go. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Stay on target. Is there any chance you could let us know in advance what you would be doing in a, uh, for a future stream? So we could prepare and draw alongside you? Uh, if I can, I will. Usually I don't know what I'm going to be doing until I'm sitting down doing it. So if I'm able to, I will. We'll, pro we'll try to do that more because like I said, the, um, the one on Tuesday coming up, that's going to be our last one.
for Tuesdays. Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to go back to only Fridays, like today. And um, uh, and then, so I'll only have one that I have to worry about during the week. So, that being said, uh, I should be able to plan it better. <laughs> yeah, next week is Zebra Striped Orca. Duh. <laughs> it's what? The Zebra Striped Orca uh, suggestion. Oh. time for a watercolor painting or sketchbook drawing lately? Nope, not lately. It's all been birds of prey. Birds of prey are doing demos. I did quite a few demos this week. There we go. One more capybara. A cap of bara. Do a layer right on top. I give him a little wet eye. There. He's a little bit. Doesn't he feel a little too uh, too dark to you, Dustin? Compared to the others? Yeah. Yeah, he, he feels a lot more saturated than the others. There you go. Done. Done, done, done. 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 Done, done. Try to lower the saturation on him just a tad more. Try kissing my grits. Ew. Oops, I gotta put this up here. There, I'm just gonna come through here and just add a couple little highlights here and there on the eyes just to give them a little bit of life that just made that look weird that's all that did I really like your gouache paintings could you add a gouache demo to your birds of prey course uh, no the birds of prey course is more about anatomy it's not about um, tech uh, it's not about medium or anything like that it's more about anatomy and markings and things like that but I will do, uh, I am going to do a gouache course, and, um, and I'll, I'll do some birds and, and whatnot in that, whatnot, and whatnot. Now the birds of prey course is really, it's not, it's like my other animal drawing courses, it's really about anatomy, and, and uh, although I do a fair number of bird paintings in there, I'm really talking about, uh, anatomy and that, and that sort of thing in there. I wonder if we should bring the one that's laying down uh, more to the right, like more centered between the, the two. Yeah. What was that, number one? No, that was number two. Thank you. Because yeah, the way his head, because you know, the way that that one's head was in front of him, it was just kind of getting lost in the detail. Here we go, something like that? Yeah. So now it just kind of flows from one and then goes it goes towards the other. There. See what, I'm, see what I'm saying? Yeah, I still feel like it needs to come over here a little bit. Yeah. Just, a, I'm getting tangents. I'll change that tangent right there. That feels better. So it was just a little bit of a, of a movement. But. Good. 
didn't look like it moved. <laughs> it moved. It actually did move because I have to redraw the white. Noise. So oh, there's our capybaras. You wanted a capybara? We get a capybara. I just wanted to get five. You get five. 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 Let's uh, do this. Save. Don't forget to save your work. How do I spell Scabibara? Uh, let me look that up one second. Yeah, I think that's how. I think it's C A P Y B A R A. It's C A P P Y. Yeah. So one P. C A P Y B A R A. Yep. Okay. Capybara. All right. So now. 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 We now is time to freeze. Do lead animators typically collaborate with the voice actors playing the characters they are drawing during animated movie productions? No. Or are those departments completely separate? Completely separate. Sometimes they'll they'll get together, but not not as a rule. But mostly uh, the leads. Yeah, because the, the, the dialogue is done before the animation, so... Do they get a video recording of, Sometimes. of the dialogue? Sometimes. Or is it all just, just audio? It's always, it's usually just audio. Gotcha. Oh, I still owe someone out there a Kung Fu Panda. That might be good oh. for Tuesday. Yes, you're right. I owe you a Kung Fu Panda. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> Twitch question. Can you please do a close-up of the paws, toes? Hey, oh, they're so just kind of... <laughs> what? I don't know. Just here's a her toes. I was here's saying. a close-up of the paws slash toes comes down like this oh, it like, that. like this we got a little toe that comes down I think they have a little dew claw here what about you know? and then it comes down like here Get on over here. Hey! Come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> Give it a glacius. Hey! Come here. <laughs> there. Here's your close-up. Yeah, get real close. There you go. So close to see pixels. Little feet. Bing, 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 <laughs> I love your work so much, and I'm glad a god like you answered even, even if my question was unclear. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't unclear. In Panama, you see them as often as squirrels. Oh, really? That's interesting. That is interesting. So instead of 
like here you, we say squirrel. Every time we see a squirrel over there, be like capybara, yeah. capybara, bara, bara. Is it capybara or capybara? I don't know. Bara, 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 bara. <laughs> yeah, the middle one is is like draw me like one of your French girls. <laughs> Draw me like one of your French barras. Just throwing in a little bit of little color back here just to give it a little interest. Just leaving some some interest in there. Interest. Interest. That that looks interest ink. It's big squirrel guinea pig thing. <laughs> <laughs> Like somebody's like, oh, we, we just saw a beast, a beast. What look, what it look like? Look like a giant pig. <laughs> well, let's take all these. Let me get rid of that. Let's take all these and copy them. Turn these off. And merge layers. So now we got them all on one layer. Oops, I forgot to add. Well, that's okay. I'll just leave on there. And now watch what I can do. I'm going to go to my smear tool, my smudge tool. I'm going to go to here. Oh, is that locked? Trying to give them a little bit of fuzz. The thing I find funny about capybaras is how they have such big bodies and yet their legs are like are like small, thin stilts. <laughs> yeah. In comparison. Exactly. That's what I like about them too. I can soften but up these edges. It reminds me of like uh, like wiener dogs or corgis, where they have such big bodies but tiny little legs. Yeah. Yes, uh, YouTube question. Are you going to be on Lightbox this year for the online event? Yes, we will be. Absolutely. All right, so there is our capybaras. Capybara. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was fun. That was fun the death, Dick. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's do this. Do you ever use the color dodge blending mode in your drawings? Yes. I do. Oh, Travis says, oh, FYI, they have three toes in the hind feet. Three Come toes on. plus the dew claw on the four on the four legs. And they are webbed. Well there you go. Well, there you have it. There you go. 
What? Happy Bar. Why the cookie crumble? That was fun. So, I hope you guys had a good time. Remember, Tuesday we're going to be back, and uh, that's going to be our last Tuesday live stream. So, make sure if that's the one that you always go to, make sure you make it to that one because that's going to be our last one. And then we're going to go back to only Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, just like we did today. After next week, that's going to be our only one. Also, I want to remind you to go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check out Tony Cipriano's new course on sculpting in ZBrush. You can get it for 50% off in pre-order. The, the uh, course itself will be coming out August 31st. So uh, you've got 10 days and you can get 50% off before it goes to full price when it comes out. And um, uh, also for teachers out there, I really uh, I want to stress this. If you are a teacher that has a class, an art teacher, and you're looking uh, for some uh, good uh, cost-effective cheap online teaching, we have a deal for you. So um, we, we have group rates available for teachers. And if you're a student, let your teacher know. So come over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and you can, I think it's CreatureArtTeacher.com slash education. education. And, uh, and you can uh, give us the information there. Also, I want to remind you about our scholarships. We're giving away a $5,000 scholarship every month. And uh, you still have time to submit a portfolio for this month. Don't worry, though, if you're not ready, don't turn it in because we're doing this every month. And I would much rather you put forward a portfolio that's good than something that's rushed, okay? And also, I want to remind you that once you get it in, you don't have to keep submitting, okay? I, want to, I can't stress that enough. And these scholarships are good for college. They're good for online teaching. They're good for a lot of, you know, basically any kind of education, okay? And uh, so we want you learning, and we want to help you do it, all right? So uh, I hope you had a good time to, let me blow this up. Yes, do it. There we go. So I hope you guys had a great time today. I certainly did. Uh, I definitely got taken out of my comfort zone. Never drew, I've never drawn a capybara. A capybara, capybara, capybara. Capybara. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. And, um, oh yeah, also this is the last chance. Today is the last chance to get my How to Draw Human Anatomy course for just one dollar. One stinking dollar. One and you stinking can get dollar. Like hours and hours and hours of human anatomy teaching from me. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great week. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Wear your mask. Don't be a douche. Wear your mask. <laughs> and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, what else do I have to add? Do I have anything else? Put your shopping cart away. Put your shopping cart away. <laughs> and uh, be nice. Just be nice. Be nice. We're all in this together, eh? So, uh, anyway, I hope you have a great weekend, and we, I will talk to you on Tuesday. See ya. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if any of you guys are new here and you're st interested in any wildlife photography, you can check out my Instagram over at Dustin underscore Blaze. Uh, I post new photos over there, and I'm changing my schedule. Instead of uh, posting photos daily, I'm posting photos every Friday. So it's because of because of summer. But once winter and fall hit, I'm going to be going back to daily. But for now, every Friday, I'm posting new wildlife photos. And on CreatureArtTeacher.com, you can get you can find my photo reference bundles of over 650 photos of different birds. Gators, otters, you name it, they're there. So hope you go see those. Hope you enjoy those. Hope Have a good weekend. Stay safe out there. Again, wear your masks. We'll see you Tuesday for the last time. And until then, Cowboy Bebop. See ya. Cowboy Bebop.